and let us all that we can to build a better future. Lauren, everyone watching, who's ready to hear a bullshit story? Who's ready to hear a fantasy? Is this... (laughs) I'm going to bring in somebody who has integrity, who has never once lied about her record, who never once flip-flopped. I'm talking about none other than the senator from Massachusetts. (laughs) She never lied about her racial identity either. (laughs) Give it up for Senator Elizabeth Warren and how Biden has actually been a success. And Senator Warren, Democrat of Massachusetts, joins me now. I've been very focused on this in thinking about the midterms and thinking about particularly this, which I think is the real telltale sign. How few Democratic incumbents lost. Not a single Democratic incumbent in the Senate, very few relative to other years in the House. Why was that? What did it have to do with the record of the bills they voted for? Because we actually got out there, fought for working families, and delivered for working families. Railroad workers. Uh, uh, Railroad workers. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Those railroad workers. Whatever happened to them? Small business owners, too. Just two years. And even though we had the skinniest possible majority in the Senate, we nonetheless, as Democrats, pulled together just enough to be able to deliver for working families. And that gave us something to run on in the midterms. It really is the reminder. What about Roe v. Wade? Does anyone remember that thing called Roe v. Wade? Does anyone remember that? Or did we we forget? Oh, she said it gave us something to run on. She said it out loud, Kit. It gave us something to run on. It gave us a platform. This gave us something, a jumping off point. She literally said it. It's like she's trying to spin it in a different way. But no, no, no. She said it out loud. Yeah. Good policies are good politics because these were good policies that we were able to deliver on. Pay attention to how many times she's blinking because that's how you can tell a liar. A liar can't keep their face straight. They blink a lot like this. They blink a lot. As you said, climate, a $35 cap on insulin for seniors. We're going to get a $2,000 cap on how much seniors spend altogether annually on prescription drugs. Uh, we're able to talk about what we tried to do for people, what we are doing on uh, reducing student loan debt. Just one after another after another, 15%. Minimum corporate tax on billionaire corporations. You know, these are the kinds of things that are not just popular among Democrats. They're popular among Democrats, Republicans, and independents. We showed that it is possible to put government on the side of the people. And what did... Okay. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've been living under a rock, but... Did we do something about cannabis legalization, Lauren? Yes or no? No. Did we do anything about student debt forgiveness? (laughs) I mean, we gave people a lot of hope and then took it away. Okay. That counts as doing something, I guess. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll agree. I'll give a pass on that one. Did we do anything for women's reproductive rights or Roe v. Wade? Yes or no? No. Did we do anything about our infrastructure? Um, I mean, things seem like they're getting crumblier. Okay, fair enough. I'll give you that one. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Did we do anything to stop, I don't know, this recession that's severely impacting millions of Americans and workers as, you know, things still keep on getting pretty pricey? And no, no, no. Workers are getting less money. Inflation's going up. Interest rates are going up. Good job, Democrats. Did we do well anything to help small business owners or either that, uh, the railroad workers or no? Yes. Did we do no. something? No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. My brain's still working just a little bit. Uh, Amer- Americans, they're not still at risk of being evicted from their homes and apartments, though, right? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's. I just it's- think it's funny that she was trying to be like, "Oh, we have all these good policies." It's like, no, no, no. the The main reason that, from what I can tell, that. Uh, Democrats didn't lose as much as they could have is because a lot of the candidates that the Republicans were putting forward were objectively nuts. 
and yeah, Republican people are not stupid people. And they're like, um, these people who are objectively like l- crazy and like spouting this nonsense rhetoric. It's like they can pick up on that because guess what? Just like they're not dumb. <laughs> they're not, like. Mm-hmm. Come on. It, that's why they like they, they didn't win everything. There was that's why there was no red wave that was being like touted as the thing that was for sure going to happen. It's because the people who the were were most well known in the Republican Party as the people who were being set up to try and take these roles were crazy. Like they were saying crazy things and so no one wanted that to happen. It like a lot of, it things certain things only work when Trump does it himself Mm -hmm. if other people say trump things people notice that that's a weird thing to say or do and they're not going to accept that it only works for him for some reason for some reason did the republicans do by contrast they screamed they yelled they said hateful things but they had nothing no ideas does she know that the Democratic and the, uh, the Democratic establishment and the DCCC actually gave money to a lot of those crazy right wing Republicans who are Trump like Republicans? Did, does she know that? Because that's he, he, even he's looking at the side like, yeah, does she know that? Because because <laughs> he's not believing like, holy cow, this person's a liar. Not even promises of how they were going to ma- help people have more opportunity and make their lives better. The Democrats had a darn good argument in the midterms. The, the cap on insulin and, and generally prescription drug prices, I saw a bunch of polling from a bunch of pollsters that said that polled, you know, at 80 percent or yeah. and across the board. Right? This is- yeah, but prescription drug prices are still high. Insulin prices still high. Oh, yeah. I mean, what world? Warren. Really, really high. I mean, Warren, I no, hold on. Hold on. You think Warren's going through some, some kind of dementia, too? Because honestly, either that or she really believes her lies. I don't. Oh, yeah. Or she really, really wants to. She's holding on to something. I'm just saying, you know, go to Mark Cuban's site. <laughs> just, yeah. He's his insulin is cheaper. This is like genuinely I, I want to just indulge me a little bit of, of hypothetical pushing you because I think you're right, right? So I think that basically there was a kind of Venn diagram between things that were popular and that were good policies. But there's also like, there's a lot of stuff left on the cutting room floor. I I think about this a lot in that original Inflation Reduction Act proposal kept getting pared back. Now, I think the vast bulk of that would have been good policy and would have been better for the country. I also think it might have precipitated more political backlash, frankly. Like, it does seem to me there are points, and you know this as a senator, where you are trading off sometimes between what might be good policy and what might invite political backlash. You know, I'm just not there with you on this one. I got to say, if we could have... Of course she's not. Because it's true. It's it's, it's, Because, again, we've said this before on the show, it's not about... The policy. It's not about helping people and what's popular. It's about helping them and line their own pockets and figure that like, it's not, Oh, I'm against what you just said, which was the truth. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give her this. She, she really believes her lies. She, she made a good story and, uh, Hey, yeah. Uh, and, uh, BS DNC, I mean MSNBC. All right, I'll I'll give you credit for this one. You barely did a pushback question, but even then, with that weakness, Chris Hayes, I mean, she's lying to your face. Everything that's on the cutting room floor is what the Democrats promised us in 2020. And typical Democrats, what did they do? They shit on the floor while they were putting all the other stuff that they promised on the cutting room floor. And now it's mixed together with dirt, shit, and all the other crap that's on the ground. And if you vote blue no matter who, guess what? You are a good sucker because this person, Warren, that people seem to really uh, rally around, is lying to you. I've gotten universal child care. What? I think we've just think had that, that many helped? more people saying, yeah. I am all the way in. Then I, why I didn't you do that? All the way on that. Again, they didn't do anything. If they, like, it, the, what was that? What is that though? Like, she's like, well, if we'd had something like this in there, then more people would have been on. It's like, well, then why wasn't it there? Why was it not there then? If you, if that would have been like the turning point. No, well, the thing is, you want to know why? Because again, uh, they need to fundraise. It is good policy. And that's the kind of thing we're going to be fighting for going forward. And and again, it's all about 
delivering for people where they are, the things that make a difference. You know, for so long, the Republicans have run on the notion that government's bad, government's yep. terrible. At, at best, government is inept. At worst, it's, uh, it's really actually doing harm. Gee, Democrats, you're actually doing the same thing, too. You're actually making government worse. So there you go. We're out there demonstrating exactly the opposite. We are showing that government can be on your side. Look right now, for example, on inflation. What do people across this country understand is one of the major causes of higher prices? Price gouging. And for the first time in what feels like forever, I Wait mean, for decades it. and decades, Wait for we it. actually have an FTC and a Department of Justice that are trying to enforce the antitrust laws and hmm. really going at. Oh, wow. Antitrust laws in which there are loopholes for politicians to worm their way out. Hey, Warren, what are you going to do about Nancy and her fantastic friends doing insider stock trade? Hey, Warren, what are you going to do about the Republicans who are also doing insider stock trade? Are you going to do anything about it, Warren? Hey, you're going to do something about Citizens United or the McCutcheon decision where money is speech and corporations are people? Yeah, this is the person that, again, also, yeah, I'm going to say it just to reopen the wounds. And of course, Bernie being the nutless wonder that he is because he allowed it to happen. This is the person who helped to help also derail his campaign, too. She lied about him, lied about uh, the progressives that were supporting Bernie Sanders. This woman is a habitual liar. I think telling the truth is is like an anathema to her. I think she doesn't know what, what that is anymore. After companies that are engaged in price gouging, going after this enormous concentration that has happened in industry after industry after industry. And this is one, even if people on Capitol Hill don't always get it, I guarantee the president of the United States gets it and the people across this country get it. Final question for you is on Jay Powell, the chair of the Biden Fed. You're very, you've been critical of him, particularly uh, the the regulatory parts of his. All right, I, I I can't. I only could stomach a liar for so long. Lauren, I want to give you the final word for this. I mean, I I just don't understand why. I mean, again, why does she have to bring Biden into it at the end? It's again, you were, mm -hmm. like we talked about originally. They're laying the seeds for the corporate Democrats to continue in the same path that they've always been so she's got to like every chance she has be like oh and biden understands biden's with us on this one and when she keeps putting herself in with the common folk it's like but you didn't do anything they you continue to not do anything um like and sitting there looking they be acting so excited about all the things you said you did but like uh hey says so like everything that's what about everything that is just on the cutting room floor, the things that you promised, the things that we asked for, the actual popular policies that were what we asked for. And yet the only things that kind of made it to the floor were almost reminiscent of those things that mm -hmm. were like and and acting like it was some big triumph. I it's exhausting. Agreed. Agreed. And the thing is. If you seriously, and this goes even to Republican voters too, if you vote Democrat or Republican, you're voting for people that have made a career to lie. They miss their calling to be professional actors or be in the entertainment business. So the next best thing they could do is gladly uh, prostitute themselves to corporations and special interest groups and lie to the biggest audience out there, the American voter. Look, American voters. Team Blue. Corporate media successfully brainwashed you into losing your ability to think critically. Corporate media and the two-party system and all your institutions made sure that you keep on believing the lies of these politicians. But if you really decide to one day wake up, rub your eyes, and look around, you'll realize that nothing has fundamentally changed. It doesn't matter who sits in the White House, be it a Democrat or Republican. You want to know who's going to have a seat at the table? Chase. Bank of America. Wall Street executives, hedge fund managers, equity groups, the top 1%. You don't have a seat at the table. You never will. And same thing goes for these senators and House representatives in Washington, D.C. They, they don't like you. They're not going to think about you.
And there, there's uh, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren in front of the American people lying about Biden's quote-unquote success. You know what that tells me? The fact she's willing to lie to every one of you? It tells me also she doesn't respect us. They don't think about you. They don't like you. They don't respect you. And they'll lie to you because they know they can get away with it. And that's why they keep on doing the same BS over and over again. So this thing about Biden's success, I don't see it. So good luck. Vote blue no matter who in 2024. The orange boogeyman is going to be running again. And I'll be very curious to see just how exactly this election will play out because it seems all the Democrats want to hedge their bets on Joe. So we live in a clown show. It's a Saturday morning cartoon show. It's nuts. It's bananas. And I wish we didn't live in this timeline.